Hey everybody, this is Devin Sheets with Alpha Sound, and I'd like to share an analogy with you that I think will help sound engineers communicate a little bit better about what it is that we do. So, like a lot of times you'll be in a discussion with a client or a musician, and you'll have to talk about what value you're adding to the experience, or uh, what the scope of your influence is, right? What exactly are you doing and what are you not doing? And this discussion can be a disaster because I, I've known a lot of engineers who just don't have the language um, or the conceptual framework to talk about what they do, even though they might be very good. And this can leave people frustrated and confused. And, um, you know, I think that especially in the classical world, right, um, this leads people to be very scared of using amplification and, um, uh, you know, there's this minimalist approach where it's like, well, if we have to use it, let's let's keep this nebulous monster as small and as innocuous as possible, right? And you combine that with a, a little bit of something that happens in the classical world, uh, maybe as a result of this, where there's this idea behind the raw acoustic performance, uh, you know, that, that that's sort of ideal and pristine and that we should preserve that um, all the time, everywhere. So if we're going to use amplification, it's this necessary evil and we should make it louder but not change anything else about the experience. And, and so, you know, I just try to go out there and do a good job with amplification, especially in classical settings, and let people hear how it can sound, and then let them work out on the back end how to justify their experience. A lot of times there's cognitive dissonance. People aren't used to hearing that, because 99% of the time it's terrible. And, and so when it's good, it, it, it doesn't jive with a lot of the sort of correct thinking that they have about the issue. And uh, yeah, so I say, we, you know, we should front load the, the, the topic with some language that um, makes sense to people. And so I think a good analogy would be something like photography or cinematography. Okay, so, you know, I, I like experiencing things in person. I like going to places and actually seeing stuff. Um, I've traveled, I've been to about 40 countries and some countries I've traveled very extensively in. I like going to places and experiencing things and it's great, it's changed my life. And everybody should try to do that. And but the thing is, I also see the work of great photographers and cinematographers that have um, presented uh, these same things that I've experienced um, in a different way, of course. And, you know, they're, they're using a medium. They're using lenses, editing, color correction. They'll frame it, put it in an art gallery, say, or something like this. And, you know, when I see that, when I experience that, that is a powerful and unique experience that stands on its own. It's not even trying to recreate the original experience. That's not the point. Um, you know, if you wanted to do that, I suppose you could try to use, like, virtual reality, and you could try to immerse someone in a different time and place, but just go see the original thing. It's going to be better anyway. Um, so clearly, this isn't the point of great photography. They're actually purposely altering the experience from the original, letting you feel the medium. And um, there's, um, there's a lot of value in that, and I think everyone... Everyone knows this about photography and cinematography. Um, it's not a replacement of the original. Um, it's not a betrayal of the original. I mean, if you take a, a picture of, a, of an animal with a telephoto lens and you use great color correction and editing, or you know, you take a picture of a waterfall and you use a long exposure so the water is very glossy looking, these are things that you can do in the realm of photography that you just can't experience otherwise. And and they're wonderful and they're great and. They, they don't betray the original. If you want to go see a real animal or a waterfall out there, go and see it, and that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, so I, I think that, you know, talking about sound amplification in this way can help people feel a little bit more comfortable about it, can help people understand what's, what's, what's happening. Um, so, for example, if you have a kick drum, you know, you say, well, you stand in front of a kick drum and you listen to how it sounds. Well, that's not really the sound we want, is it? I mean, you want to put a microphone in there and you want to put it through a bunch of subwoofers. And that's really the sound that we want, but that is not faithfully and accurately amplifying some uh, acoustic experience of a, of a kick drum. That's, that's not what we're doing. Like, the whole point is we're altering it. You're, you're feeling the medium. You're feeling the, the speakers and the amplification process. Um, and that's great. We all want that. Now, it's tricky because when it comes to classical music, you kind of have to ask, what what is the goal here? Like, is the goal to try to faithfully um, recreate the experience of, of an acoustic ensemble or performance? 
if so, have at it. That's great. You can do that. But I think that um, I think that in the classical world, again, going back to the fact that most of the time amplification is done so poorly um, that there's this sort of defense mechanism in the thinking of a lot of a, a lot of classical musicians, and I'm, I include myself in the classical world. I I've studied classical piano my whole life, and I come from a a, a classical background. I played in in orchestras and with choirs, and um, so I know that there is this thinking that um, is a minimalist approach, and um, I think that that is just due to the fact that um, it, it really is rare that it's done well, and no one has heard it sound great, or very rarely so, and when it sounds great, no one has the language or the intellectual architecture to understand what they experienced and to parse it out and say what was due to what. A lot of times when a, you know, somebody amplifies an acoustic orchestra very, very well and um, people will have an elevated experience, but what they'll say is, well, they just performed better or the orchestra was just really on that night. No credit goes to whatever the sound engineer was doing that maybe was actually quite an alteration. Um, you know, if you'd have shut the sound system off and did an A-B comparison, like, the, it would not be a simple matter of bringing the volume up and changing nothing about it. The sound system was actually adding something to the experience that was positive, that was pleasurable and powerful, and we're not getting credit for that because we don't know how to talk about it. So, um, anyway, I hope that this analogy, you know, uh, works uh, for you. Give it a try. Maybe if you have a better one, I'd love to hear it. Um, Anyway, thanks for watching.